We come to the monastery as a safe haven. There are not that many safe havens outside. What's a real problem, though, is if you can't find a safe haven inside, then there's nowhere where you can go, really, because no matter where you go, you take all your troubles inside. There's no place to put them down. So you've got to learn how to put them down inside. You see the advantage of this, the advantage of developing the safe haven inside. That gives you the motivation. The Buddha talks about chanta, the desire to practice. Well, it's all about motivation. You keep yourself motivated, even when it's difficult. Because it's one thing to give rise to skillful mental qualities, but it's another thing to keep them going. That's where the stamina has to come, through, come in. That's where your ability to stick with it, even when it gets difficult, that's when that becomes really important. So you use your motivation and try to be really careful and attentive to what you're doing as you practice. Because if you just go through the motions, it gets sloppy, and then you start seeing results that you don't like, and then you begin to say, well, maybe this practice doesn't work. It's because you weren't paying careful attention. Then you have to learn how to step back from what you're doing to figure out, okay, if, not, if things aren't going well, what's not going well? And not side with the voices inside that say, this is not going, not going to work. I was reading online recently this one person commenting on it article I wrote on body contemplation. Well, this stuff doesn't work. There's no way that you could possibly overcome your attachment to your body, so why even try? What kind of attitude is that? That's an attitude that destroys things, that destroys your possibility of gaining true peace inside. And yet people are all too willing to identify with these destructive voices. So learn how to step back from them, recognize them for what they are, figure out where they're coming from. They're coming from a frustrated desire for goodness. So you have to look into the frustrations and remind yourself, okay, this is going to take time. Get some perspective on this. And this is how your meditation begins to gain results. And you can develop that safe haven inside the place where you need to go. When things outside and inside start getting difficult, you know that you've got someplace inside where you can go. And you're beyond reach of those things. So keep this in mind, that this is going to take time. And it's going to require that you use your ingenuity and that you side with the practice and don't side with your defilements. The defilements are so easy to pull you away because you're so willing to li listen to them. If you're not willing to listen to them, you begin to realize that they have their weaknesses. They're not really as convincing as they may have seemed at first. But you've got to have that conviction, you've got to have that desire that this is going to work. And then you're going to make it work. And that right there is half the battle. <laughs>